On today's episode of Prominent Quarterback, well, he got that bag of money. We break it down and we talk about wide receivers. We're ranking 20 through 11. We're counting down some very, very serious discussion here about Bengals players, about Eagles players, about Seahawks wide receivers. Don't miss a moment. Leave us a comment and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Tuesday, April 18th, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, bald guy, <laughs> Inducers Alley today, that would be Papa Josh, who is, uh, congrats, almost uh, 60 years old. Yeah, that's a big- Closing this, in. It's a big decade for you. In. Man. Like, I'm so excited. He doesn't look a day over 52. No. So that's the great part. Yeah, but I mean, it, I wondered. I have always always wondered your twilight years. You know, what are you thinking right. about? What kind of things do you? The books. The best is in the past. Your future's it's it's shorter. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's barely there. It's grim, really. Cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. to, yeah, yeah, nice. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, we have a wide receiver show today. I'm excited. The countdown begins. Wide receivers rankings twenty through eleven. That's right. Uh, there are some interesting names in this list. Some. This is the prime area where the do not respect wide receivers show up. Yeah, yeah. At twenty, we'll, we'll be. Yes, we're coming out of the gates hot because you guys won't respect this man. Really? Um, yes. I, I mean, at, at twenty, I remember verbatim last year. It's, it's telling you both on the show: Are we disrespecting this man? And yes. you both said no. Well, let's get ready. So you watch yourself. It, it is for the record. It, it's just Andy that's disrespecting yes. him now. We have we have moved forward. Oh, is that based on existing current rankings? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ultimate draft kit's available. The pre-sale right now, lowest possible price. UltimateDraftKit.com. You can dive into the Dynasty Pass. I can tell you because I was witness to it uh, probably two hours ago. There are some exciting new features on the way. Yes. Uh, I I was actually kind of blown away. I normally expect purely mediocre work from our team. And this was just above that. What is great is you're referencing a very, very cool new tool and system that will affect a lot of things, and that's great. But that's like one of four big upgrades on the way. Um, we've kind of announced this on the uh, footcast, but we're going to have Superflex rankings in there very very soon for all the dynasty and in season oh man dozens of people out there are so <laughs> excited brooks and his friends you you super flex people you rap scallions and then they uh, love their quarterbacks you know we've got risk ratings we're adding a brand new feature called the upside meter this year that's going to help uh inform you in terms of variability with a player how volatile they're, they're going to be and the potential for some of these players that look we can't justifiably rank them in maybe the top 10, top 15, but there are players out there ranked in the 20s and the 30s that have top 15 potential, and we're going to be able yep. to illustrate that in the projections in the Ultimate Draft Kit and uh, very excited about the progress we're making there. It releases on June 1st, but the Dynasty Pass is available now at ultimatedraftkit.com. There is also something happening next week, Andy. What would that be, Mike? Oh, it's Ultimate Draft Week. Again? Again? I mean, it happens every single week. I can't. The draft is uh, every single week. Oh, every yeah. week. Is every ultimate. week is ultimate. But draft every week. year, I mean, look, the NFL draft is next week, so next week is the ultimate draft week. Very excited about that. I mean, there's there's a lot going on. Yeah, football is. I mean, we're hearing rumors. Come on to the show today, hearing rumors about Dalvin Cook. Is he going to get traded? Is he going to get cut on June first? I don't know. Nobody knows. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. 
Well, the Eagles and Jalen Hurts have agreed to a five-year, two hundred and fifty-five million dollar contract. We got that. Is that where's that money drop at? Yeah, I'm sure Al can find that. Money, money, there it is. Money, money, money. Get paid, Jalen. Congratulations. Hundred and eighty million dollars in guarantees. No trade clause. He is now the number one highest paid quarterback in the NFL in new money average per year. Not that that's surprising. It seems like all the new deals are always going yeah. to be number one or close to it. But for a team that definitely wavered a little bit on Jalen Hurts, right? Last offseason, flirting with Russell Wilson, wasn't sure Jalen Hurts was going to be the guy. And then Jalen Hurts deserves all of the accolades, praise, and credit, along with Jason for believing in him. Jalen Hurts I mean, gets but, paid. But, but Jalen Hurts, Jason, the praise they both deserve, pretty even. Yeah, I would say 50, so. 50-50 between one, the two. One believed, one did all those things and, and you know helped carry his team into the Super Bowl. The other one watched the Super Bowl. Watched, watched it happen. I was there. And was we like, were both there, Mike. I was like, yeah, Jalen, I, I knew. I knew uh, since you got picked in round two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you're a dynasty player, this certainly is a, you know, you didn't expect him to go anywhere. He's been amazing, but this doesn't hurt. Nope. Get him paid. Very exciting. Uh, Lamar Jackson has been reportedly offered a deal that includes 200 guaranteed. All right, let, let's wrap this up, Lamar. Let's. I know you want, well, allegedly, you want a fully guaranteed deal. 200. If this is really what the offer is, Let's just let's wrap this up. Go play with Odell Beckham. Go play with Rashad Bateman with this with the new heavy passing scheme. Let's go. The, the, this this deal is really good for the NFL and for quarterbacks because right now what Lamar Jackson has been doing has been trying to essentially and 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 not even incorrectly. I you could argue rightfully hold the NFL hostage and say no, we want fully guaranteed contracts. If Deshaun Watson can get it, I can get it. But now that the potential MVP candidate who went to the Super Bowl, who is just as young and good as Lamar Jackson, deserving of an equal contract, does not get the Deshaun Watson level guaranteed money. Uh, th this, I feel like, brings some normalcy to the quarterback market, and I do think Lamar Jackson will be forced to reevaluate. Now that now that Hurts has signed a contract like this, Lamar signed a contract like this. Yeah, the, the Chargers... And the Bengals over here, like, oh, thank goodness, thank you, Jalen. Right, thank exactly. you for doing that. Because if they dug in together, oof. Well, it's the age-old question: Is two hundred million dollars enough money? Right. And Brooks has. I mean, I don't know. What's your opinion, Brooks? Is that enough? Nah, not quite. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> yeah, two hundred's a little low. But um, yeah, I mean, Mike, you have been. You want this thing wrapped up? Let's. I got. I got to make a keeper selection next week, guys. <laughs> it is coming up, isn't yes. it? Yeah, for those that are newer to the show and don't know what we do, our our league of record has a unique format where we it's a three keeper league, but we have a a process by which we have a franchise selection that you choose one player and they're locked onto your roster, which is great, and then you choose three more from your roster of last year, and those three go into a keeper lottery. They cannot match the position of the franchise player, and then we have a special day in our league. That is right after the NFL draft where we all jump on Zoom, everybody's together, and that keeper lottery happens, and you only get two of the three at random on your team, and the other one goes back into the draft. It's a way that we've, uh, you know, in the keeper leagues, sometimes some of the, all the best talent's gone. Mm -hmm. It's a way to randomize that a little bit, get some good talent at the top of the draft. It's always very exciting. You're rooting for uh, – everyone's rooting for a certain three-pack that they hope they get, and – uh you got to make a choice, I huh? Have to, I have to lock in who goes into that lottery. So if he's signed, yes. Lamar is now what? In, is he in the lottery? Yes. Who's your franchise? Uh, Christian McCaffrey. Okay, decent choice. Decent choice. Not the best, but... Uh, yeah. You know who's going back in the draft? Uh, DeAndre Swift. <laughs> Get off my team. <laughs> um, Bringing me down. That'll be a new twist. Why don't Bad we vibes. Everybody chooses one player from their roster that they get to kick out of the league for a year. <laughs> <laughs> so that player doesn't exist in fantasy. It can't be yes. drafted for one year. It is a, it's a relegation. We're, we're so angry with it's this player. It's the spite pick yeah. of the, of the 
of the year. And so DeAndre Swift wouldn't be available oh, yeah. for anybody. Which that would be doing the rest of the league a favor, though. I I'm being sneaky. I'm putting him back. I'm tantalizing everyone to draft DeAndre Swift again. Putting and, that bomb yeah, right underground. Yeah, yeah enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy your landmine. No, no, no. See how, is, see how sweet that fruit this is. This will be the year, Mike. This will no, be the year. But it was not this year. You just need to go Gibson, Swift as your RB1 and 2. Come on, do it. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, the Chiefs re-signed Justin Watson to a two-year deal. Okay. Superstar. The, the Dolphins <laughs> signed Chosen Anderson. That's formerly known as Robbie Anderson. Formerly you, known as Robbie Anderson. If you choose... To change your name more than once, do I have to oblige? It's it's just one. It is going from Robbie to Robbie, where you just change the spelling a little bit. That's not really changing I, your name. Uh, but I really feel like that was an unnecessary move because not only was it unnecessary when it happened, but now you didn't even stick with it. What like that he, change was not important, Robbie. <laughs> no, what chosen. If, what Sorry. If, what chosen. if it went to release Anderson? Hey, well, not anymore. No. He's, he's on the. He's he's on a a team that can actually win a Super Bowl now. From the bench, uh, say, whatever man, he'll get the last laugh. More Dalvin Cook discussion. Vikings general manager came out, said conversations are always ongoing with him. We're trying to be <laughs> solutions oriented and always trying to put our <laughs> roster together within our constraints. Dalvin Cook will not be a Minnesota Viking. Is sure well, seems like that. yeah, like the, the odds of that. I I put it sub twenty five percent. They're gonna try to trade him. If there's any kind of market whatsoever, they might cut him. I would just be surprised. They they need the they need the money, and I don't think they want to invest that in Dalvin. ESPN's John Kime reporting the Commanders have made it clear they believe in second year quarterback Sam Howell to take. <laughs> nice, you guys are you're you're in for a year. Yeah, oh, I am. Baby. And and here's the thing. I like how you address me with that. You know what it it's, means to it me. It was a global thing for for everybody. Global, global. Uh, Sam Howell. To take over the starting job in 2023, sure. I think he's going to be good. I really do. No. For the NFL <laughs> or for fantasy? For both. I think Sam Howell is a good prospect. I, I mean, the commanders, yeah, why Why do you think that? Uh, uh, well, I love this tape last year. He's a dual threat guy that, to me, at his age, he's still very, very young. He looked as good as anybody last year. It was like him and Pickett were both first-round grades to me, and I think they got a screaming deal on Sam Howell, and he's going to get the opportunity. I mean, we'll find out, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, he fell in the draft. He's not someone that has the draft capital where they are going to stick with him if they lose games, and uh, the Manders are probably going to lose a decent amount of games. So I'm not saying he's off to the beginning of a Hall of Fame career, but I do think he is a quality player. 11 for 19, 169 yards, one touchdown, one interception, three sacks. That was the week. That was his only game. It, which week was that? Week 16? 18. 18. Who yeah. was he playing against? Cowboys. Okay. I mean, Cowboys were a top tier who, defense. Uh, who won the game? The Manders. Oh, oh undefeated. Okay. So he's won or no. Oh. <laughs> I think somebody might want this to happen more than it really will, but we'll, we'll roll with it. Uh, my guy, Sam Hale for Jason. Is he on your dynasty team? Him and Trask, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, no, I do not believe I have Sam Hill. How did you let that happen? Uh, fell through the cracks. It, you could have just scooped him up for probably like two bucks <laughs> off of the waiver wire. Uh, shall we move on to wide receivers? Sure. Wide receivers. All right, 20 through 11 at number 20 overall. Tyler Lockett, Ridiculous. inevitable. The Frank Gore Ridiculous. of the wide receiver position. Um, last year, 84 for over 1,009. Finished at wide receiver 13. Ho-hum is just what he does. Top 15 each of the last five years. He was very consistent with Geno at quarterback during the year. Had a decrease in the boom games in 2021 with Russell Wilson. He had 31% great games. You can go back to the truth episodes, listen in about that definition, but two great games last year. So not as many boom games, but I, we were sitting here in the middle of the summer last year saying Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Are we just being stupid to doubt them? Because we, because it was Geno Smith. Yeah. Well, the, the, doubt really the answer guys. is we were stupid to doubt them. We were, it was, I don't think that we were stupid to doubt them. I mean, sure. The, 
the end like the end product was they were fantastic. Doubting Geno Smith going into the season, I think was a was a proper thing to do. Geno Smith was is the reason that we were all so horrifically wrong on, on these guys, and you got a huge ADP discount on both of them. And I, like Geno Smith, is back. You have you know the continuation of that career. Can he build on what he did last season? And I've, I, Tyler Lockett should be another draft day value because people will be focused again on DK Metcalf, which I have DK Metcalf ranked higher, so I'm not going to argue with that. But Tyler Lockett's going to be fantastic. He's going to be over a thousand. He's going to have you know what seven plus touchdowns. He's such a good good wide receiver. Yeah, he's solid and he's the reason that I I won't I probably won't draft any DK Metcalf next year. I have Metcalf okay. higher, sure. But if you draft Metcalf, you are basically saying that you can't draft Lockett later. That's true. And I mean, right, yeah, yeah. right now Metcalf is going in the 3rd round. Tyler Lockett's a 7th round pick depending on your on your scoring format. He's right around that 6-7 turn. That is an exceptional value. You know he's going to be better than that. But because he's the number two, or at least the perceived number two for his team, it's hard for players to go in and say, I'm going to bet on the wide receiver two for Geno Smith to do it again. So we know he's not going to skyrocket up. If, if he's a little higher come, you know, the August draft days that, that, that we'll have, then he'll still be a value. You called him the Frank Gore, and you're exactly right, because Frank Gore did this year after year after year after year. He outproduced his expectation, outproduced his average draft position, but he just didn't have enough, like, juice to where people could think he could be the number one, and so he just – people picked other people. They 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 swung people for the fences. People other people. They swung for the fences and tried to go for upside instead of saying, this is a really rock-solid pick. So I'll have Tyler Lockett all over the place. Yeah, and I mean, I think I think I understand why you'd want to have DK Metcalf. I mean, he's more physically dominant. You know, he had more receptions than Lockett did, but Lockett scored more. And like you said, you do. If you take DK, you're you're done. You're not taking both of these guys. And the value on Lockett's going to be better than DK. He's still young. DK could have a much higher ceiling in terms of a future season so people are yes. going to prioritize mm -hmm. that yeah dk metcalf can turn into the overall wide like wide receiver one he could have just a a freak outlier season where he catches yeah 13 four, 14, 14 touchdowns he has 1200 yards i i mean not projecting that but that's in something that could happen to him that that won't happen for tyler lockett but he's going to be so solid and a screaming value. He's going to be a top 15 wide receiver because yeah. that's what he always is. Speaking of tantalizing players that maybe never are more than that, yeah. Mike Williams comes in at 19, 28 years old, best ball ADP's wide receiver 20 right now, and we all got him right around 20. 13 games last year, 93 targets, 63 for 8, 95 and 4. That's a disappointment on what you hoped you would get from Mike Williams. Uh, came into the season, it was really Mike Williams that was around. I mean, you lost uh, Keenan Allen to injury. Jalen Guyton was out to injury. And Mike Williams had every opportunity and didn't do anything with it. Well, I mean, he had his own injuries as well. But that that's just part of his story, isn't it? And that the big problem with Mike Williams is that I, I'd love to, nothing more than to be in on him again and then look the <laughs> fool. But... This is a fool me thrice. This is type a team a situation. where, yeah, I mean the the rumor mill right now with the Chargers is yes. they're going to get a wide receiver, Jordan Addison. It could be Addison. Will be Addison. Okay. Um, well, I hope you got your your bets in, Jason. Yeah, I do. Um, Jordan Addison, for example, could come in, demand a lot of targets. Mike Williams, sixty receptions seems like kind of where he's destined between injury and just disappearing acts. Like, that's been the problem with Mike Williams is you can have a game where he goes out and dominates, and then you could have a game where he goes out there and you forget he's playing for the team. I don't understand it. He was eight targets, 77 yards a game when he had a full allotment of snaps last year, but it didn't feel like it. Yeah, and that's why I think his best ball ADP is a little bit higher than I think he's going to go in your home leagues because you know that when he has a big game, they're monstrous. His volatility is all over the place. He's not a consistent wide receiver, but he obviously could be the wide receiver one on any week. So there's some upside there, and depending on where he falls in a draft, when you're when you've got a big target for Justin Herbert, there 
he could be a good pick, and he could be a post-type sleeper because he disappointed a little bit last year. It'd only be of- the third time he's a post-type sleeper, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel like he has been that many times. No, I, but what you're saying there, I, I believe, is the correct takeaway. We are going into, into year seven. Oh, gosh. And he was the wide receiver 10 two years ago, but outside of that, he hasn't been in the top 20 one other year in his career. So we kind of know what we have here. We've got a talented, inconsistent wide receiver who will most likely finish outside of the top 20. All the promise in the world isn't going to come to fruition. His points per game last year were 11.2. His wide receiver 10 season was 13. So he wasn't, I mean, it was still an okay per game season, but it just, you know, four touchdowns instead of nine from the year before and then missing the games. Yeah, he missed four games and one you can say he Basically, he missed five because you had the the week 11 against Kansas City where he came out, caught the one pass, and if you remember, re-aggravated, I believe it was the ankle. So, if, on what a about Kellen game, Moore? Can he fix this? I, it it could happen. The The thing, it'll, it'll be an ADP thing here for Mike Williams because he still had, you know, in, if you take those five games out, so let's say 12 games, four times he was a top 10 wide receiver, like, there's not a lot of guys who will be drafted in his range that can give you four weeks of being a top ten player and and really help you win a week. So he he will be fascinating to watch. Of the what does the fantasy community actually do with Mike Williams and redraft? Because I think at this point, with how many times he has been, you know, a, a post hype type of a guy, the the majority of your fantasy football league has been personally victimized on their roster by Mike Williams already. So have, who goes in? I would love Mike Williams as a flex player. Sure. That would be the kind of boom bust player I would I wouldn't mind having in there. 18 is Debo Samuel. Oh. 27 years Man. old. I've got him at 16th, the highest of the group, Mike at 19, Jason at 21 in these early wide receiver rankings. This is a what do you do? With Debo. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'll let someone else grab him. He I, was <laughs> He was the wide receiver two in twenty twenty one. Yes. He was unbelievable. Last year, injuries, played thirteen games, ninety four targets, forty two rushing attempts, finished at wide receiver thirty seven. Yeah, his seventeen game pace is like three receiving touchdowns or maybe even fewer than that. He averaged you know, obviously dealt with some injuries, right? But he averaged 10.8 fantasy points per game. So that is not the wide receiver two of two years ago. That isn't, it's not, it's not bad. That's not crushing your team, but it's not that huge upside that you're wanting. You know, Amari Cooper was 12 fantasy points a game last year and was good, but not, you know, outstandingly great. So now that you have Ayuk, now that you have, uh, who's come fully into his own, you've added Christian McCaffrey to the team. I'm not. We're not sure who the quarterback is, but let's say best case scenario. I think we assume that would be Brock Purdy for the sake of Debo. Sure. Um, you're you're talking about a guy who's a a very very talented player that isn't going to get enough opportunity for me to invest any kind of high fantasy draft capital into him because I don't feel like he's going to return that. Well, and I I mostly agree with you. I think Debo is a player that's going to go higher than I'm probably comfortable drafting him. You get kind of put into the same box where, like, you probably, if you take Debo, you're not going to take that late-round upside of Ayuk. And the team no longer has to use him to win a ball game, which I think was part of that wide receiver two season. Christian McCaffrey or a Kittle game or an Ayuk game or an Elijah Mitchell, there are enough weapons where you're going to have off games with Debo. But he is an elite physical athlete, and I want that to be – something people remember. These elite athletes make elite plays. He's just went from a touchdown every nine touches to a touchdown every 19 touches. And so that's a pretty big extreme. You don't get those touchdowns, you're not going to be happy. And they don't have to play him at running back as much. Right. Yeah, right Right now, and obviously ADP is, is it's very early, but right now Debo is about the wide receiver 10. So that is very, very high. It's, I, it's higher than any of us have him ranked. It's pricey. Brandon Ayuk last year, his teammate, 
outscored him in fantasy points per game. He was 11.1 and half PPR. Yeah. So this is another one of those DK Metcalf versus Tyler Lockett situations where you're going, one of these guys is going to cost a lot. Maybe has a higher – Debo has the higher ceiling to me over Ayuk because, again, he's a guy that could just break 50 tackles on the way to a touchdown 50 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's – you know, Ayuk isn't going to do that um, quite the same. But the cost to get someone who's probably going to be just as good in Ayuk for this offense – so much cheaper many many rounds later I, this is why i'm 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 pretty out on debo the in, in interesting an interesting thing here looking at Ayuk is 21 was such an outlier right to have 77 catches turning into 1400 receiving yards that's 18.2 yards per catch that's that is redonkulous and then that's now sandwiched uh, in between, you had the 2020 season, only seven games, but 11.8 yards per catch. This past year, 22, he had 56 catches and 630 yards. That's 11.3. So, like, back to a baseline of of sitting in that 11 yards per catch, which is it's still fine. And then you're looking at the rushing production. He went from 59 attempts down to 42, so not drastically different. But the touchdown regression caught up with him where he had eight rushing touchdowns in 2021, which was absurd, and then back down to three this, this past year. So I think that I think Debo will be will be interesting. He'll be very good for fantasy football, but the, you're not getting that ludicrous wide receiver two season. Well, because he was he was their best running back. And now they've got and Christian McCaffrey. He was so good. Though. No, he was great. And he but is. He with, is that yeah. good now. He just doesn't need to be used as much. Yeah, he's not going to touch the ball nearly as much as he did when he was the wide receiver two with Christian McCaffrey on the roster. Yeah, the truth of Debo is he's probably a fringe wide receiver one type of player with Jason leaning to the outside of it. All right, we are back with our early wide receiver rankings. It's a shame Kyle's not here today because when we talk about Keenan Allen, he may just appear. So if you say Keenan Allen three times, Kyle, Kyle, the, Kyle the board Bogan, board Bogan like pops out of a trash can. Yeah, that's that's fair. Did you say Keenan? Just don't say it three times. But Keenan's 31 years old, or will be when he starts the season. He was elite over the back half of the year. Mm -hmm. Wide receiver four from week 11 on. That offense, oh, though, man, that's a lot of green. I mean, it was a mess. And you remember the playoff game, too, right? Or did you put that out of your mind? The the actual Chargers playoff game yeah. or fantasy playoffs? No, the 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 fan or the uh, actual Chargers. Okay, playoff yes, I have actually. Collapsed. I did. I re remind me. Um, yeah, Jacksonville came back from being down by a million and won. Ah, uh, yes, that and won game. the ball game. Uh, we all have him right around this range, seventeen. Uh, Jason and Mike at sixteen. We're adding an upside meter mm -hmm. to the ultimate draft kit. What are you ranking Keenan Allen's <laughs> upside meter at? I, I think his upside is is certainly higher than 17. Now, he's a safe player, but safe doesn't mean that you're without upside. Like you said, he, he missed you know a, a, the majority of the first half of the season. And when he came back in week 11, he was the wide receiver four from then on out. So I do feel like we are a little low on. Yeah, I mean, yes, in in cumulative stats, he was he was but he was over thirteen fantasy points a game. Everyone we've talked about is nowhere near that. Sure, so it was it was a consistency blast. Yes, it, it was where, a blast. Where in that time frame, so weeks twelve through eighteen, where he, week eighteen he was the overall wide receiver one against the Denver Broncos, but up through there he was never higher than wide receiver thirteen. I now, think now, not that that's bad, but I'm saying. But, he showed what he could do in a spurt this year, but was injured for the beginning part of the year and hasn't had a top 10 fantasy finish since 2019. Yeah, I mean, the injuries are, are concerning for an older player. There is risk with Keenan Allen, and I do expect, as we talked about with Mike Williams, that they're going to add another wide receiver here, an heir apparent to Keenan Allen. Uh, but I just want to point out that his upside, you know, when when I say he was over 13 fantasy points a game, that's including the injury games in the beginning. Th that last stretch, he was 15 points a game for fantasy and consistent. Uh, there's, I mean, you, you're you're the dude for a good offense as a possession receiver. I didn't see anything obviously on film at the end of last year to say he's you know lost a step because obviously we're getting to the age where you don't want to be holding the bag. 
Sure. You don't want to be there when he does lose a step, which will happen. That could happen this year. If you want to take him off your boards because you know he's going to be playing at 31 and you just want to swing for upside in youth, I, I don't I don't really blame you. That's kind of my normal strategy. But I like the situation, the system for him, the quarterback, his talent, what he did last year, and I, I will probably be drafting him. See, I, I asked that question because I would rate him very low on the upside meter. Because of his age and the fact that they're going to add a player and because he's more of a, you know, those games that he succeeded in 14 targets, you know, those type of games. So I would put him low there. His best ball ADP is much lower than any of us have him ranked. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I, I think I'm going to have him quite a bit. He's outside the – he's not even a wide receiver two. That's silly. How could he not finish as a wide receiver two or better next year other than just I just feel like we should games? have the same conversation as Adam Thielen with him. No. Because no. because there was a point. I mean, I feel like you were trying to get rid of Adam Thielen for like four years, and and with due to age and like thirty one is not a great age. The because you're going to have archetypes. You're going to have diff. You're going to have more injuries uh, potentially crop up for him, and that has to be a factor. Where Adam Thielen was still kind of chugging along with with touchdowns and and things like that. Keenan Allen is just his routes are still sharp, and I think he'll still be demanding you know that yeah eight plus targets a game. I, I, i'm glad you brought up Thielen because that's and and talking about these these archetype players because you look at what larry fitzgerald did when he was 33 34 he was a slot possession wide receiver whose route running and hands were just unbeatable you could throw him the ball and he can get 100 catches on the season and yeah he's not a burner he's not going to get double digit touchdowns he's not going to you know average 16 yards per reception but like adam Thielen. You know, he was a guy that, you know, every single year he was a long, you know, 13.9, 12 and a half yards per reception. All of a sudden, when he was 31, it went, he, he had the touchdowns, but it went down to 10.8 yards per reception. Then 10.2 last year. He, he's, he's just not built to be that style of player. I, I think that it should work for Keenan going forward to be that short area possession, you know, 10 and a half yards per reception type of player who just accumulates massive volume in that offense Devonte smith at 16 24 years old being drafted at 13 mike's got him at 18 why do you hate him mike the the green jerseys okay just not a favorite yep. color even green though with envy you're in yep. a green shirt right now but just you don't like the it's not eagle green though okay this is yeah, that's puke green. Uh, mm -hmm. all, olive green. Oh, that's what I meant. Olive, olive puke. Yeah. Olive puke. Uh, olive puke green. Uh, Very nice, Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. 136 targets, 95 for 11, 96, and 7. Finished at 10. I mean, it was a it was a great year for Devontae Smith. And uh, I guess the question I'd have to throw out there first is, you know, was this just a special season for Philadelphia? And uh, did we see some peaks, whether it's from Jalen Hurts or Devontae Smith and, you know, A.J. Brown, does it cap the ceiling of Devontae Smith? Like, what's the – like, if you had to project the next five years of Devontae Smith and his average fantasy finish, are you putting him at wide receiver 10 where he just finished? Oh, that's I – mean, maybe close to that. It's A.J. Brown is not the issue to me. The, the issue is, is Dallas Goddard. And what does that offense look like when they're when all three players are on the field and all three are doing their thing? Because the 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 Devontae Smith breakout it lined up pretty well with Dallas Goddard's injury. Now I know there was a little bit of overlap, you know, weeks sixteen through eighteen where where Goddard was was back, but I mean he's just recovering from the injury and they're trying to work his way back into the offense and, and so that's that's my concern is while Jalen Hurts is just got the bag, deserved to get the bag, he's not going to be putting up Patrick Mahomes' five thousand yard seasons where you can really sustain a whole bunch of guys. And my concern is that AJ a. Brown will get his. Like I, I think that's he's the true number one of the team, and then it'll be Dallas Goddard and Devontae Smith kind of fighting for for number two on the team. Smith could certainly take that role, but I'm baking in the risk of of what he did last year with the excitement for him moving into next year that his ADP might be a little bit too rich for me. 
Yeah, it, it, he's he's a difficult prospect because you put it, uh, I think, accurately, Andy, of questioning, was that just a magical season for the Eagles? Are they going to come back down to earth a little bit? Probably, right? Their schedule will be harder because they did so well this last season. Um, usually when, when a team does as great as they did, they're going to revert. They lost all their coaches. Their coaches are gone. Yeah, there is that too. <clears throat> Offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, then they took people from their teams. Like, There's a lot of turnover in Philly and so I would expect it to be a less magical season but put that to the side Devontae Smith is an outstanding wide receiver I mean he's a top 10 NFL wide receiver to me I, I don't I don't know how you oh could be much better than him I mean it's a shame that he's not you know 200 pounds and can bully people around but as far as the skill set of a wide receiver he, he he's as good as you could ask for in all facets of the game. So if this is a high-powered offense, you know, we've been talking about Tyler Lockett and um, Brandon Ayuk and these kind of twos for the team because he is the two. A.J. Brown will be the one, but they weren't that far in what? targets, 145 to 135, somewhere around there with, with the targets. He was like 10 away, and there's still upside for him. It wasn't like he had 1,600 yards and 12 touchdowns. He, he was great, but... 1196 and 7 sounds repeatable to me. When did Goddard get hurt? Week uh ele he missed he missed weeks 11 through 15. Okay, so it was a smaller window than I thought. His Devontae Smith's target pace from before and after the bye went up quite a bit. I mean, he was, you know, as consistent as they come in terms of getting targets every week, 8 9 9 8 8 8 12 13 8. So it's a lot like uh, Chase and Higgins to me. Offense you believe in, players that are legitimately talented, not just opportunistic. Um, Devontae Smith is a really, really good player. So, yes, he is. Um, you know, I, I just – the only thing I'll say, if you, if you want to say anything about him, is I think he had four games inside the top ten on a weekly finish. So, uh, out, of, out of 17 weeks. Yeah, his upside is not – he's not going to have those – uh, many week winning performances. Didn't AJ Brown have like a three touchdowns week or something like that? that? Sounds very AJ Brown. DeAndre Hopkins at fifteen, who still averaged more fantasy points than that uh, Keenan Allen season. He's at thirteen point three in nine games played. He's only thirty years old. Uh, he'll be thirty one though as well as Keenan. Uh, do you guys have Keenan or I have Hopkins, Hopkins higher. higher? Okay. It, Hopkins is really tough, right? Because right now... I don't now, think he's going to be in Arizona. The presumption is he's not going to be a Cardinal. We don't know where he's going to go. There's teams where he could land, like the Buffalo Bills, where all of a sudden he's not necessarily the dude. He'll be great, a great offense, but now you're not talking about 150-plus targets when you're splitting that with Steph Diggs. And there's other teams he could go to where he could show up and have a Devontae Adams-like season where... He's got 160, 70 well, targets. So. Let, let me give you the four teams that he decided to, on Instagram, respond to whether he'd be interested in playing. Oh, with I did them. not see this. Um, the teams he was in favor of playing for. Give me the peak season for these two teams. Okay. Bills? Peak season would be wide receiver 11. I agree with that. Chiefs? Peak season would be wide receiver three. <laughs> okay. I think that would be really good. His body language in the video uh, did not have him excited to play for the Patriots or Jets as options. Patriots have been rumored very often for Mr. DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe he does not believe in the quarterback situation. The, well, is that because the Patriots don't? That would be a good reason why. Yeah. Zap, zap, zap. <laughs> Hopkins... Uh, Look, yeah, like you said, it's a hard projection right now. This this ranking is based on the talent we believe he still has, and the destination will determine our final ranking. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, what we learned last year with Devontae Adams moving teams, he's older, but he looked great on film. That's a lot of what we saw from Hopkins. Hopkins came back, and when he got back from his suspension in week six, week seven, week eight, week nine, week 10, week 11, week 12, he was a uh, wide receiver two or better. Every single week, a wide receiver won half of those weeks. He was absolutely outstanding. So TBD on he was he about. was fantastic, and he was he still had some good games with Colt McCoy. I'm not sure if you had said that. And then it was that 
Who came in for the Cardinals the, for the Christmas? Did I stop watching it, David Blau? Was it Blau? No. It was – shoot. I'll, we'll have to, to look that up. Trace McSorley? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, – uh, We were sh- McSorley mistaken. Shocking. Uh, Hopkins' <laughs> production fell apart when Trace McSorley was the quarterback. Uh, also, something I don't know if you guys had realized this because I did not. When they signed Hopkins to the huge extension, he had a no-trade clause. That no-trade clause went bye-bye because of his six-game suspension. Ooh. Oh, he violated Ooh. it because of that? So the Arizona Cardinals can, can send him back can, to the yeah, Texans. Th- this isn't a <laughs> – but I'm saying they're not th- – Hopkins has no leverage – you know, business wise, over the the Cardinals saying, "Nope, the the Patriots are the highest bidder, and we're shipping you to New England." It's very interesting that that took place. I did not realize that about Mr. Hopkins and the suspension. Things have gone downhill for Arizona. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm now in the uh, crash crash the season for Caleb. Is that crash what they're saying? Caleb? Okay, I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to f- collapse for Caleb. That makes more sense. Um. Don't mind it, although we've already ruined a bunch of quarterbacks, so I'm not sure he wants to come here and be ruined. Yeah, Hopkins wants out, is going to get out. Buda Buda Baker Baker wants out, is going to get out. Our star quarterback is injured and rehabbing. He'll get out too, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, let's not talk about them anymore. Amon Ross St. Brown at 14, just 23 years old, 106 receptions, 1,161 yards, six touchdowns. Finished at wide receiver eight. What? No, he didn't. Yeah, no, he was. No, he didn't. He was unbelievable. He finished inside no. the top twenty-four only six times. So that is a product <laughs> of. Hold on, I'm consistency. Looking, I'm looking at this game log. This guy is the wide receiver eight. Mm-hmm. Playing no. playing yeah, seventeen because, weeks goes a long way, doesn't no, he, it? Well, well he there, missed there, a game. There are a lot of games where he scores. 10.4, uh, Yeah, okay. I and suppose. and those games are technically not wide receiver twos. Right, they they're they're but in they're that, good games, but they're still really good games. Let's I know see. that you know our color is yellow, but those are solid games you'd be happy with. You were happy with him, so this so is often. off. We, we are, the fantasy footballers, we are in fact doing Amon Ra dirty. Yes. Five games that he wasn't double digits. There, that's a better way to look at the great season that Amon Ra Which it, Brown it had. was great. Now again, this is going to be another one of those situations where people. You know, how, how heavily do you invest? Mike and I have him at 15. Jason has him a little higher at 11. I think we all believe in Jamison Williams having an ascension there. Uh, you know, what does this team do in the draft? They got a great offensive line. Is Jared Goff going to put together a good season? Like, there are variables there, but if you have variables around a situation, I want it to be a player that gets 140-plus targets and catches 100 passes. I mean, it, it helps fix the issue. He finished his rookie season – on the season at wide receiver 21. If you don't remember what happened, he went freaking nuclear at the end of the year. One people championships was unstoppable. There were a lot of questions as to whether that was situation or whether he's that talented. What he proved to me in his sophomore year last year, finishing as the wide receiver eight and being solid every single week is that he is that talented. He is going to demand those targets. And then this modern NFL a, a a big bodied slot receiver can get a hundred receptions. He's going to get his. And if Jamison Williams steps up, I don't see that as something that is going to preclude Amon Ra from getting near a hundred receptions again. So in a PPR league, I am a hundred percent in. It's going to be Jared Goff. I don't think that the the Lions are going to trade up. You listen to Dan Campbell talk; he just literally comes out and says, "I love Goff. We love Goff. Everything's on the table." But he's our dude. And why wouldn't he be? He was he was good. You're the odds on favorite to win the division. So I think they're gonna invest what? in What? Yeah, right now. No. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, who, Minnesota? who would you put? Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota makes sense too. Sure. But yeah, they are last last I checked. Um, that's yes. wild. Which is all that you need to I mean, do to ruin their season. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying they don't have a, a chance to win the division, but the to be the, the betting favorites I'm, is interesting. I'm pretty persuaded by what Jason said. I think I have him a little too low at 15. I, yeah, I'm, I don't, I'm in. I'm I don't in see a him. lot of objections to or or things that stand in his way to repeat what he did. Uh, and I don't think Jameson Williams is going to hurt him. I mean, DJ Chark is gone. Jameson Williams is a big play guy. 
Don't you know? You look at the running game. Well, the running game was too efficient last year. Maybe he mm-hmm. scores more touchdowns. I I don't really see a lot of problems with Amon Ra, short of some other weapon being added to the offense, which I mean, I guess is possible. But when you have a guy in his rookie year catch seventy six percent of his passes, follow that up with one hundred and forty six targets, still catching seventy three percent, you don't go away from that player. It is a chain moving guarantee. Yeah. Uh, he's got separation on every play. Yeah. T. Higgins at 13. Still no extension for T. Higgins. Rumors abounding. 24 years old. We all got him in the same spot just outside the top 12. I'm guessing they have to resolve a Joe Mixon situation before they can. They may need to resolve a Joe it. Burrow situation before they extend yeah, T. Higgins that, too. That's coming too. Um, contract year for T. Higgins. He's going to be expensive. Jamar Chase is their one. T. Higgins is as good as it gets, though, on the other side of Jamar Chase. He's just 24 years old, leads the NFL in contested catches, passes the eye test every time you watch him play football. Uh, had 109 targets last year. Jamar Chase was up at 134. Finished at wide receiver 17. Would you have looked at last year and and considered it a good, like a meet-your-expectation season for T. Higgins? Um. No, I don't. I think I don't it was think maybe so. a little worse I, than we thought it would be. It, it's it's hard to say is that expectations or is that hope because they were kind of one and the same with T. Higgins, but yeah. uh, certainly would have wanted him to be nearer to a, a a wide receiver one. As the wide receiver seventeen this last year, he did have a solid season, and I see a repeat of this where he's going to be a really really. Solid wide receiver too, but I do think we have, you know, the idea that he and Jamar Chase are both going to have explosive wide receiver one seasons. This happens very frequently in the NFL, where a team will have two wide receivers from the same team finish as a wide receiver one. I don't think that's going to happen with T. Higgins this next year. Now there are some arguments that with if you lose Joe Mixon and they pass more and they've lost Hayden Hurst, okay, maybe the then T. Higgins is more involved, has more targets. But, but I, I feel like what we saw this last year is going to be kind of a carbon copy this, this next season. There was nothing he did wrong. He was very good. He helped the team a lot, and this is who he is. Now, Chase did miss five games last year, um, and that would have been an area maybe you think Higgins could have jumped up higher than wide receiver 17. I The only thing I will – the only thing I'll really say about T. Higgins is I don't think he'll be on any of my teams because I don't think he's getting disrespected in any sort of draft format. I think people want a piece of the Bengals offense. It's sexy. It's flashy. And so they pay up for it. And, you know, I don't think he's going to end up on my team because I have to take him where likely I'm taking him to be my one. And I don't know how comfortable I am spending that draft capital where I don't get a, I don't get a bargain on him. No. And, and to speak to Jamar chase missing games, he missed weeks eight through 12, right in the middle of the season. During that stretch, that was T. Higgins' best stretch for fantasy. Makes sure. sense, but he would have been on a – like that That four-game stretch would have been a 153 target pace, not 109 targets. He would have been scoring – he did score 15.5 fantasy points per game in half PPR. So if you say, okay, well, now Jamar's going to play the whole season, may, maybe it's not wide receiver 17. Maybe it's, you know, wide receiver 20, 21, 22, 24. But if, if you're playing the game of – well, if Jamar Chase plays the whole season, well, you'd have to ask, okay, what if T. Higgins plays the whole season? Because he technically missed one game, but he really missed four games because he was knocked out of uh, three contests very early on in the game. I, I love T. Higgins, but I, I don't, I don't disagree with anything you said, Andy. Of I think he's being drafted appropriately. He has huge upside. Uh, just on a week to week basis, even when Jamar Chase is on the field. You've you've seen games where T. Higgins it's take, his game. He takes over that particular game. So I love him. I think he's a fantastic wide receiver. Well, too. and those players, if their counterpart goes down, I mean you brought up Devontae Smith. Too. Like yeah. if AJ Brown gets hurt, Devontae Smith is a world beater. Same goes with T. Higgins. Something that is built in there, uh, for sure. So yeah, I do think this offense is gonna look different though. Like we're talking about T. Higgins right now. If they draft Bijan, or they draft, oh, oh man, if they, or they draft Michael Mayer, who is, I mean, I know people in Cincinnati would love to draft a top flight tight end uh, into this offense. There's a lot of expectations of that potentially happening. 
if Dallas doesn't take them first. So we'll see. Chris Olave comes in at 12. Yes. 22 years old. Rookie season lived up to that hype. Uh, it wasn't a great end to the season. Uh, he was the 11th overall pick in 2022. Over the last decade, ranks top five among all rookie wide receivers in yards per route run and uh, targets per route run. Everything that you saw with your eyeballs all season long said Chris Olave is going to play a long time at an elite level in the National Football League. Is Derek Carr enough to give you the confidence to to put him inside of this top 12? Yeah, I mean, it, Derek Carr, it, it, this isn't me saying Derek Carr is a huge upgrade and uh, Chris Olave is to the moon, but this is to say Derek Carr is the same as what he just had. He's yeah. better. He, sure, he's better. He's better I, than what Dalton was. My point is he did it with Dalton. So I'm not I'm not saying Derek Carr isn't good enough to be able to allow Chris Olave to succeed. Uh, you, you read that stat of being top five in yards per route run and targets per route run. The other guys there that he's with is Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Odell Beckham, and A.J. Brown, world beaters. And that's kind of the talent you saw on the field. So I don't trust this offense necessarily. The, uh, I don't know, the the game plans and the Peytonless um, shenanigans of this offense kind of had me scratching my head, but they also lost a lot of pieces last year in the wide receiver position and kind of scrambled um, so I don't know how much of that was just them patchworking their offense versus having a poor system in place, but the talent of Chris Olave is undeniable. I, I think Olave is a stud. I is would, there any world where he, after this year, we're looking at him as a, a top five type yes. of guy? Yeah, I, I think so. The The numbers, just for more, more context, this past year was 2.42 yards per route run. That is, I mean, that's ahead of CeeDee Lamb. That's ahead of Amon Ra. That is like, you know, just behind Devontae Adams in 26%, 26.5% of his routes, he was getting a target. That is truly a top-tier number. I And in fantasy football, we want to target these second-year wide receivers because that's they make the jump. You know, see Devontae Smith this past year where if you know a player is good for sure, you aren't speculating. Because there's, there's some second-year wide receivers where you have to speculate of like back when – uh, when I was in on Michael Pittman, it was it was the second year plus some speculation. This is Chris Olave's good. He is a very very good wide receiver. If he gets a, at least a slight upgrade in the quarterback position, he is going to be an absolute monster. His uh his first ten games, his pace was eighty six receptions on one hundred and forty plus targets, thirteen hundred yards, and five touchdowns as a rookie. And what I liked to see last year when watching those games was how quickly, as a rookie, he became the go to guy. Like, if you needed a third down and you needed a big play, they were willing to throw it his way. And you had, like, look at what Devontae Adams, the the change of, of the archetype for Devontae Adams last year. He went with the Packers. He was more of a, a shorter yardage guy. Yes, he could hit a home run every now and then. But last year with the Raiders, I mean, I, I think that was his highest average depth of target of his entire career because they were just sending him down the field and he was succeeded. Different offense, but the point being, Derek Carr... Send in the car. Was the Send one, the yes. Car. Was the one getting it done. The, and this is, it's sounding a little too much like a, a, a gooey love fest for Derek Carr. I don't want that to be what this sounds like. Nope. My guy, Sam House, my guy, <laughs> Derek Carr. Yes. But, but season's off to a great start. He, to me, is an upgrade over Andy Dalton. Oh, gosh, yeah. And I, I think, like, the discussion of, we won't, it won't be Garrett Wilson us talking about him today. But making the choice of, like, do you want Olave or do you want Garrett Wilson, I think it is a hyper-close conversation between those two guys. Olave wins down the field, and Dalton give, didn't give him enough chances to do that. Correct. Um, DK Metcalf, the last name we'll talk about today, comes in at 11. And, you know, in the context of what Jason talked about earlier with Tyler Lockett, Metcalf's 25 years old. Mike and I have him the highest. Mike at 10. I have him at 11. Jason at 17. It's really, this is one of the harder situations for me. Because I, I know what he is physically. I know what he's capable of. He's the kind of player where the more you throw him the football, I mean, you're going to have the byproduct of results automatically because he's physically dominant. You want to throw him in short area, red zone, down the field, throw him the ball more. 
Just throw him the ball more and more times, and he will always produce. Uh, six touchdowns last year was low for what you would have hoped, especially when you lead the league in in-zone targets. 24 in-zone targets, six touchdowns. Wow, really? Yeah. He's actually led the NFL in that category over four years. And why do I know this implicitly? Because every time I played against him last year, I would watch these games. I would want to, him to not do anything against me. And he was getting thrown the ball in the end zone in every play in the entire game, it felt like. <laughs> There's nobody more, like, he's I mean, in the upper echelon. Who would echelon. you throw to if DK Metcalf yeah. were on your team? Yeah. So DK Metcalf. <laughs> so I, I, it really comes down to, like, I don't think he can bust. Let me put it that way. I don't think DK Metcalf can bust. But the question is more like, is he worth the draft pick and can he give you a season that outperforms some of these names behind him, like an Olave or a Higgins or a St. Brown? Um, those would be the three that are most in question to me of this list. Yeah, uh, DK is awesome. Ever, All three of us here completely agree that he is a great wide receiver um, and I would agree that he's bust-proof. But last year he played every single game had 140 plus targets, had the most targets in the red zone, uh, you know, in end zone the, targets, in zone targets in the NFL, and he finishes the wide receiver 18. So I do think we pump the brakes a little bit here. Sure, I mean, obviously, if he ends up with 14 touchdowns because he's being targeted in the end zone so much, he will have monster production. But it's going to be based on the the touchdowns, and those are not a sticky stat, not something I want to predict just because he's a big-bodied guy. I mean, Tyler Lockett outscored him in touchdowns, and he's a, a little itty-bitty baby I wide think receiver. He, I think he deserves Des Bryant touchdown credit, though, because he's been four years in the league. He's been double digit two times. Like He's led the league in that staff for four years. Like If there was ever going to be a player you bank on it, I'm willing to say DK Metcalf is that guy. I will most certainly have him projected for more touchdowns going into the season than I will Tyler Lockett, which is why he's going to finish ahead of him in my rankings. But... You know, it, as we brought up in the Tyler Lockett conversation, if I've got to draft this player in the third round and his teammate who outproduced him last year in the seventh round, I am not taking DK Metcalf and I will let someone else bypass him, even though he certainly has the peak outcome ceiling case. It reminds me of, of Mike Evans' rookie year, 12 touchdowns the following year. Yardage what was it three yardage went up and it went down to three and then when you take a look at the metrics it was him and Jameis just weren't clicking when it came to touchdowns and then 2016 rolls around 12 touchdowns back for Mike Evans so the if as long as the opportunities are rolling for DK Metcalf uh, it's a good I mean you just just stack four touchdowns onto what he did last year yeah he's and in he's, the top 10 and he's at 10 and, and he's a top 10 wide receiver um yeah, and Kyle Kyle is reminding us of the exponential power of certain types of targets. Whereas like a red zone target uh red zone target is one point seven times as valuable as a target between the twenties. And inside the ten target, more than two times as valuable. An end zone target of which he had twenty four is two point five times more valuable than any other target between the twenties. So it's it's shocking to hear twenty four end zone targets and the touchdowns that he came down with. That's it's funny because that feels it, like an outlier. It was like what you said. He could have the outlier year where he goes 13, 14 touchdowns. What well, that wouldn't even be unreasonable with twenty four end zone targets, right? Uh, but yeah, there, there's uh, there's the balance to be had here with confidence that Geno Smith can come back under this contract and do it again, and then Tyler Lockett's involvement in the offense, Kenneth Walker's emergence, um, some different factors in this offense, and and like I said, I I think. The best thing I can say is I don't think DK Metcalf can really bust. I really don't. I think you're going to be happy to have him on your team. It's just how how pricey is it going to be, and do you want to give up your chance at a discount on Tyler Lockett to take him? Yeah, that's fair because giving yeah. up the discount on Tyler Lockett also means giving up on the upside of having a top three wide receiver crazy uh, season. And and you know there's a lot written that upside wins championship. It's funny though because I can almost feel the mailbag question coming in of. Are you willing to have both those guys after what you saw last year in Seattle? Like, there are a handful of teams you're like, ah, Higgins and Chase, sure. Of course I would. Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, yep. What about Lockett and Metcalf? Yes. And I don't think so. I mean, it, it, we're all saying that, and yet, what were they? So Metcalf was 18, Lockett was 17? Or no, he was a top 15 guy, right? 
Yeah. So you, <laughs> it's two top twenty wide receivers. Well, Why would you not want that? I mean, I haven't looked to see how I wonder what, their consistency kind of uh, zippered together, but I do feel like you I like the consistency I did, I, zipper. I did like that. That <laughs> yeah. was nice. Uh, and he even did the yeah. for those listening, he put the hands together like a zipper. Yeah, but it's one of those hand zipper. Were there good games, you know, from Gino that they you know, they all come together? Yeah. Or is it inconsistent cuz you know, he's Gino's not throwing for 5000 yards. Right. Right. Um whereas Joe Burrow can, Herbert can, Hurts it, can provide enough value for both, yeah. Yeah, so uh I don't I don't know. That's a great yeah, question. No, I, as I, to I don't whether know. I want just, both. I don't think I'd want both on the team, but y y yeah, I mean, oh, you don't want two good wide receivers? So, just <laughs> just for some context here, Geno Smith last year uh about 4300 yards just shy, 4282. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if somebody's looking and, at the stats recently, and thirty passing touchdowns, Jalen Hurts. I'll just go ahead and I'll average him out because he missed oh, a handful boy. of games. His oh, average boy. would would have been just under forty two hundred passing oh, yards boy. and twenty five passing touchdowns. Yeah, because so so Hurts just ran the ball to oh yeah to whoop up on Geno. Just, just just point just out throw, like the passing production was much, some stats out there was, was higher for right Gino. into your zipper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. Jason's Jason's lost in thought now. He's deciding one of two things. A, he would take Metcalf and Lockett together, or B, he would not take yeah. AJ Brown and Devontae <laughs> Smith I gotta, together. I gotta go stand in front of a mirror and figure this out. <laughs> For it, another it, day. Introspective. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. We'll count down the top ten wide receivers on our next episode coming Thursday. Thank you for tuning in, supporting us. Appreciate it, and we'll be back very soon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.